The external layer to connectivity being covered, let's have a look at how NDFC can help you to extend a layer tree segment toward an external routed network. While the eVPN multi-site feature provides inter-site connectivity for east-west traffic, VRF light and off is used for connecting a layer tree segmented network of the fabric to an external layer tree domain, also known as north-south traffic. Each segmented layer tree network or tenant from the fabric is assigned to a sub-interface. As a reminder, each tenant in a VXLAN VPN fabric is a VRF, right? And each VRF is represented by one sub-interface toward the external one-edge router. Each tenant or each VRF can procure external connectivity via the leaf nodes with the rule of border leaf node as it becomes the border of your fabric. The role of border leaf node is crucial to automate the external network connectivity. Notice that the border gateway rule can offer both multi-site and VRF light extensions from the same device. The edge router can be any model of layer tree device, even a non-Cisco router can be represented in the NDFC topology. Either you wish to automate the deployment of your external layer tree connectivity end-to-end, -end, or you want to run a manual configuration, for example, because you don't have access to the edge router for any reason. You need to validate your choice in the fabric settings, uh, the default mode being manual deployment. So to fully automate the deployment of an external layer tree connectivity using VRF light and off, you need to follow some rules. The target router must be added into an external fabric. VRF light deployment is only possible from a VXLAN eVPN fabric or from an enhanced LAN classic network. Ensure that the role of the designated border device is a border node or a border spine or border gateway or border gateway spine. The role of the target router must be set to edge router or border node if the latter belongs to a VXLAN eVPN fabric. Advertising the default route is traditionally enough for external layer tree connectivity. In addition, the VTEP of the border leaf node will advertise dynamically the learned route from outside. Host route is disabled by default. In case of multiple sites, you may want to advertise the host route to optimize the path toward the endpoints. NDFC can address different use cases, depending on the edge router type device and if the device is manageable or not. Auto-deploy both. With this case, you can automate the configuration of both interfabric connectivity, the RFC interface. A similar case is when you want to automate the VRF light configuration between two border nodes, one on each VXN VPN fabric. The easiest case is when the edge router is a Nexus 9K and is manageable by the end user managing the VXN VPN fabric. The other case is if the edge router is, for example, a non-Nexus device, such as a, an ISR 9K, for example. And in case the edge router is a non-Cisco router, NDFC can help you to deploy the VRF light in a few clicks. Finally, even if the edge router is unmanageable, for example, managed by your internet provider, you can deploy your VRF light end off using NDFC. And there are different design options you can use to establish the VRF light end off, either from the border leaf node to an external edge router, or from a border gateway used for multi-site purposes, can also be used to extend the layer tree network to an external edge router. And you can also automate the VRF light connectivity between two border leaf nodes to extend the segmented layer tree networks between two VXLAN eVPN fabric. Okay, so the next demo shows a VRF light deployment fully automated using NDFC. So you will see how fast and few clicks you need to do that. In short, you have two VXLAN eVPN fabrics uh, interconnected using VXLAN eVPN. You need 
to create an external fabric and onboard your one edge router connected to a border leaf node of your VXLAN eVPN fabric. Set the external fabric uh, to manage mode so NDFC can push the interface configuration toward the edge router and specify the role of the uh, edge router. Those NDFC know that you wish to establish a VRF light extensions with this router. So let's go with the demo. Go to the topology view. You can see two VXLAN eVPN fabrics and one classic LAN network. From there, add a new fabric, give a name. Select the profile external connectivity network. Provide the BGP IS number for that network. Uncheck the monitor mode to allow NDSC to push the configuration toward the edge router that will be onboarded afterwards and save. Go into the new external fabric, provide the management IP address of your edge router you wish to connect uh, the border leaf nodes. Enter the credentials. You can reduce the number of hops to zero as you want to onboard only one single device. And discover that device. Select the router of interest and add it to the external fabric intranet. Close the window and return to the intranet topology view. You can see now that NDFC displays the edge router 141 with uh, the two physical links that connect to the fabric one. From the drop down menu actions called the detailed view and expand the interface tab. Identify the two interfaces and apply the routed policy if needed. For that, you can edit the two interfaces and select the interface policy ENT routed host. Notice that at this stage, there is no configuration to push. Select now the MSD scope and move the external fabric intranet into the multi-site domain. That action is optional, but that way NDFC will automatically push the configuration at once for both the border leaf nodes in fabric one and the edge router in intranet, the external fabric. The intranet fabric appears now within a gray background, meaning that it is a child of the MSD. You can click on each spine to verify the role. Here it has been assigned the role of border gateway spine as the spine nodes are also used to provide multi-site connectivity. You need now to inform NDFC about your intent to fully automate the VRF light configuration and deployment. Go to Fabric 1 scope and edit the fabric settings. Go to the resource tab and search for VRF light deployment. By default, it is set to manual. Select back to back to external and check the box auto deploy for peer that will auto configure the uh, edge router as well. Do a save. You will need to recalculate to NDFC to align uh, the configuration with your intent. Now change the scope to intranet. You need now to assign the role of the edge router. Recalculate so NDFC understand that your intent is to automate the configuration of the edge router. Recalculate uh, for the fabric one. As you can notice, there is no configuration change at this stage, but now NDFC is ready to automate the VRF light deployment end to end. Return to the multi site scope, open the detailed view, and display the VRF tab. You see the VRF tenant one you created previously. Double click on this VRF of choice and call the VRF attachment menu. Select the two 
spine nodes used to end off the VRF light toward the edge router and edit. You can see the VRF is already attached and extended for multi-site purposes. Change the extension mode to multi-site plus VRF light. At this stage, NDFC discovered the link used for VRF light extensions. Double click to edit and attach it. As you can see, NDFC discovered the P router and automatically assigned the IP address from its pool. Nothing more to do, just save the configuration, except if you wish to change the parameters by yourself. It is now attached. Save and edit next. Repeat the same actions for the second border gateway spine node. Now do a save. And now the status for the two spine nodes is pending because there are some configuration to be pushed. Close the window and return to the MSD scope. For the purpose of uh, this demo, a loopback address 200.200.200.200 uh, .200 has been created on the edge router that belongs to the VRF tenant one. Before we recalculate and deploy, check that the leaf node 111 does not see any host route 200. And check from uh, the endpoint web 111 that it can't ping the host route 200. This is expected as no configuration has been pushed yet. So let's do now a recalculations and deploy from the MSD scope. As you can see, there are new pending configuration for the edge router and the two border gateway spine node. You can preview the configuration of the edge router 141. Notice the BGP neighbor configurations, as well as the two sub interfaces toward the border nodes. You can preview the configuration on the border node as well with the default route via the edge router, the BGP neighbor configurations, the sub interface toward the edge router. You can now deploy. Return to the leaf node 111 and check the host route 200 is well advertised up to the leaf node. And verify that the endpoint web 111 can now ping the host route 200. 